Welcome to the 2022 Economic Depression and Preparation Channel. I'm your host, Tony. Thank you for joining me on this Mother's Day edition. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and mothers-to-be out there um, on this Sunday edition, May 8, 2022, in the United States. Please be sure to subscribe to Preach to Me. Uh, I appreciate all of your support and all of your comments. I do read them, and uh, we'll continue as planned. Don't forget, later on this month, we will have another live session. Um, that date is forthcoming, but we are never have a live question and answer session, maybe two this month, depending on how things go um, with my schedule um, and other things. So here we go. When we get right into it today, we're going to be talking about the worker workers, American workers, uh, overseas workers, inflation, the hyperinflation, how much more Fed rate increases we could be expecting. Um, not only here in the United States, but um, the European Central Bank and other banks have been raising interest rates. So this is a worldwide phenomenon. And uh, eventually it's going to be slowing down the economy. And so there's going to be a lot of workers that are going to be transitioning, uh, of course, um, working at home and doing different things. But uh, this economy is going to be into a slowdown. So looking at it, we have Apple workers. In Shanghai, quotamarketwatch.com, riot over COVID restrictions here. Um, you know, uh, the health crisis has continued to shut down facilities in Shanghai, including the Apple factory. As you know, the FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Google, uh, Netflix, um, et cetera, Alphabet, have been the ones that are up over 50%. They represent over 50%, excuse me, of the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 index. And now they're going to be having production facilities problems here. As you know, these iPhones and different things are made in China and other parts, Thailand, China, Singapore, et cetera. Um, and, you know, these factory workers, um, including Apple, have been kept, kept in, keeping operations going by forcing workers to sleep in the factory. So now uh, the workers are protesting the, the, in Shanghai. Um, and the, the riots continue here. And, you know, the city of Shanghai is in, in, is in a lockdown. Um, and some have been in a lockdown for the last 20 to 30 days now, according to reports over there. So at the Apple production plant, which is run by Taiwanese company Quanta Computers, and they make the MacBook laptops, employees have been suddenly banned from returning to the dormitory area during off-duty hours because of the uh, health crisis restrictions. So, guys, this makes you think, if they can, if we have shutdowns with worker factories there, we've had shutdowns over here with worker factories uh, this is going to be really concerning because the products that we uh, we only, we consume seventy percent of the products that are made overseas in various countries, and we only produce in, in America, made in the USA sticker, maybe about ten percent to fifteen percent of the products you see at Walmart, at Target, um, Save Lot, all these different places. So that begs the question: when we see workers are disgruntled, we see workers are quitting. Um, that begs the question that we have stagflation on the way. And then we're going to have a recession on the way. As we forecasted for this fall, a recession will officially begin uh, in September. So the Federal Reserve's fight with inflation could on uh, risk running stagflation, as you can see. Um, right now, the rates are not being raised high enough. Uh, they plan to hike re interest rates, of course, four times. So it should put us between 2 and 3.5%. But that's not enough. That's like taking a garden hose to a forest fire, as you know. Uh, inflation, real inflation, is at 18%, the 20% right now. The gas reduction price has reduced. Uh, when President Biden signed the thing about using the reserve gas thing two, three weeks ago, you guys know that gas dropped 10 cents and then it went right back up. The average price of a U.S. gallon of regular unleaded, according to AAA, is at 4.49 a gallon U.S. dollars. That's crazy, and it's continuing to rise. So uh, by the end of the summer, we could be at five five dollars and twenty cents a gallon for regular unleaded six. It's eight seven fifty for a gallon for U.S. dollars for diesel. If you have a diesel, uh, this is gonna hurt the trucking. This is gonna hurt the production, the movement of goods and services around the United States. And with the labor market cooling off because a lot of people have been fired or I mean, are quitting or moving to other other areas of employment that is not as taxable, um, so they can be less taxed. Um, as as much as the corporations and everything, this is gonna spell a lot of disaster. Inflation hasn't been this bad since 1982, as you guys know, under Chairman, Fed Chairman Paul Volcker. He had to raise rates to nearly 20%. I don't think that we're going to get rates nearly this high before the stock market and before this economy crash. It may get to about, let's say, 10 12%. Because remember, the United States has $31 trillion of national debt that they have to, they can't raise it too high because they won't be able to service that debt to pay the interest on that debt. So how long will the inflation last? According to CNN Business, the answer lies in the past. And they go back to the Paul Volcker days, then 70 and 80 inflation, as you know. My guess is this inflation will continue through this year and through halfway through next year. 
and that's when this economy is going to be into a, a recession and then yay even a depression and then you know it's just going to be all downhill from there um, unfortunately when the prices do come down no one's going to have any money left to do, make any real power moves but those one percent and those who are sitting on a lot of cash like the big investment corporations and everything and that's exactly what they want with this economy because you know that there's been a squeeze play between the investors and regular people um and so they buy it all up and then they drop the prices down they tell everybody to go out and buy things so houses cars you know boats you name it rvs finance and then once you know if you're not looking at to pay it off while the good times are rolling with zero percent interest rates and everything the money becomes harder to borrow as you know at eight um, at, at percent interest rates or ten percent interest rates and that creates high debt high interest rates and less purchasing power for the majority of americans and so uh, inflation continues to run rampant because the gold standard, was removed. the dollar has been removed off the gold standard, obviously Bretton Woods, and that means that your purchasing power goes down over the next two years. So um, this is going to be tremendously bad, and so the Fed will have to raise interest rates. How much will they raise interest rates in 2022? They're going to raise it four times 20, in 2022. They've already raised it in May. You can expect another 50 point basis hike, rate basis hike in June, and they may have to raise it a full point in July. OK, so I uh, anticipate interest rates on the Fed funds rates to be around 4 percent total maximum. But like I said, all of these rate hikes are not going to do anything to stop the inflation. That's a, a ship that's already been sailed. This is mostly for cosmetic damage to keep the uh, recession from being a long lived. Um, people are wondering how long the, this next U.S. recession is going to last. But what they don't know is that this is an everything bubble, but because we're in an everything bubble, meaning housing is way overpriced, way overvalued, cars are way, used car market is way overvalued, taxes are way overvalued, uh, food is, and gas and utilities are way overvalued. So we're in an everything bubble because of that. When this time it's not going to be a recession like it was in 2008. This is a depression that's coming up. And this is going to last the next 12 years. So whenever they kick it off, it'll probably be before Biden, President Biden gets out of office, maybe his last year after the midterms. It could be they may wait till after the midterms. But, you know, Republicans may take over the House and the Senate, like you said, like most people are thinking, uh, because the inflation will be so high. And then after that, they may just go ahead and let this thing drop to a recession and then then a full blown depression around the next time we elect in 2024. So, guys. This is the part of the plan. So inflation will not be controlled. It's actually designed for this economy to run hot. That's what the Fed said in the beginning. Remember two years ago before we had the, the uh, health crisis, they said that when the beginning of health crisis, they said he may let the inflation run hot. So this is what they're going to do. And it's going to drop this market down. So stocks and bonds is not where you want to be. You want to be in U.S. dollars. You want to be in cash. Even though cash is losing value daily, you want to be in hard, tangible assets. If you have a house that's paid off or a car that's paid off, keep it. Um, try to get something else involved and use of that. I'm not a financial planner. I'm just saying what you would do during a hyperinflation situation, which we're now heading into. This is the beginning stages. Um, by the time the deflation comes, like I said, the depression comes, it'll be too late to um, get anything because by then, um, you know, things will be in a much dire state. People be worried about the basic necessities, food, water, security, stuff like that. They won't be worried about buying big ticket items like homes and things, at least in the short term, or, or, or land or anything like that, or oil or anything of the commodities. So that's what I would do. I'm not a financial planner once again, but you can see what the writing on the wall, what this economy is with people quitting um, jobs being scarcely available and the jobs that are available, um, you know, the average, the average minimum wage, even in high paying states like California, $15, $20 an hour is really nothing. You really need about $30 an hour to even have a basic living in most of these cities and big cities in the United States, um, because of the rent and the mortgage and other payments that are just so high, um, and that are taxing workers, young and old, um, and so that's the state of the economy. We'll see what happens with these markets this week. I don't anticipate much, um, you know, growth um, or value going up much, but who knows? You know, everything is manipulated, so we'll see. Be safe, guys. Enjoy your Mother's Day. Try to get out. Thank you for the mothers, all mothers around the world. Without you, we wouldn't be here. Um, and, and thank you for everyone listening, and I'll see you very soon on the next video. Take care. God bless.